Hello everyone, happy Wednesday. Thank you replayer viewers for watching and thank you everyone for coming in tonight. Uh, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And we are working on an embroidery kit right now, the Craft a Happy Life hand embroidery kit. We are doing a little stitch along for that. This is day two of that. So we got the life done. We did uh, several ways to transfer your design to fabric yesterday. So be sure to check out yesterday's video if um, yesterday's video if you didn't if you want to learn how to do some transfer techniques. So that will be on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube, and it will also stay here on the Penguin and Fish. Facebook page, you'll be able to find that yesterday's video there. So thanks for joining me. We are on day two of stitching. I think we are going to stitch some of this other text in here and we might start picking up a few of these little details around the edge. So thanks guys. I am going to flip you around and we will get going. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Hello, hello everyone. Okay, here we are uh, where we left off last night. So first things first, let's get it back in the hoop. So I took it out of the hoop just so that my creases could uh, relax a little bit. Okay, so I am going to just center it in the hoop again. Loosen the, the screw closure. And there we go. That will do. Let's tighten a little bit just so I can feel it starting to tighten. And then I'm just going to stretch. I'm just pulling it taut. I'm not really stretching the fabric, but I'm just getting it taut around the whole edge of the hoop. I'm just running my finger around the edge. If there's any kind of bloops that you feel, like here it feels like it's indenting a little bit. That means it's not stretched all that even evenly. I'm gonna just stretch it a little bit more or just tweak it a little bit more. There, now it feels good all the way around. It feels even all the way around. So then I'm gonna tighten the rest of the screw closure until I can't anymore. Okay, so yesterday I was thinking of maybe starting with this text up here and then working my way down. But then I got thinking more about it today and I and I was thinking, I don't want to do that away knot again. We talked about that yesterday, but it was that knot that I made far away and then I trimmed it at the end. So I had some, uh, I had a, a tail to weave in. I would rather weave in, in uh, to begin with. So what I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna start with this letter A, which I know may seem kind of silly, uh, but I'm gonna do the A and work my way this way so I'll have like appy. <laughs> and then I'm gonna come around and do some of these flowers and knots and stuff. So we'll, we'll start working with the lazy daisy stitch. But the reason I'm gonna start at the A is because I can weave into the backs of these stitches that we already have here. Like I can weave into the back here and then just make this small little leap to start the A instead of jumping way over here for the H or like way up here for the C. We'll just do the A and work our way around. We'll eventually get around the whole thing so it's not like it matters really where we start. All right, I'm gonna grab some floss. So again, eh, about 24 inches. I think I might be using a hair more than that. Snip it. So it's six strands of embroidery floss. We're gonna split it into the three. Oh, I don't remember which side I snipped. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna pull from the side that I snipped this time. Uh, all right, I'm gonna just pull one little strand, let it all bunch up and then it relaxes. Uh, Joe, we will be starting, I'm actually going to send a newsletter out about that on um, the 4th. We'll be starting it, the English paper piecing. It's the, the, the Wisecraft 
uh, paper piecing project. I actually have the book right near me. <laughs> I'm just going to get it out for you guys. So we're going to be starting from the Wisecraft uh, quilt book by Blair Stocker. We're going to be doing the, I'm going to just page through it. I think it's towards the end here. Hold on. Here we go. We are going to be doing this project here from her book. It is, it's the hand stitched. So it's all English paper piecing, which means that we're hand piecing. We're going to wrap, you can kind of see here, we'll wrap fabric around little pieces of paper and then stitch them all together. So that project's coming up. That will be, that will be mid-September. So I think it starts September 18th, if I, if I remember correctly. So we will actually be doing block one, or not, not block one, we'll be doing block two of the of the Jacqueline Steves I Love Home quilt along first and then I'm hoping we get that done in time for September 18th where we uh, will start the hand stitched uh, that English paper piecing project from the Wisecraft book. Oh gosh I know Irene isn't the book just beautiful. I'm gonna do a post about it. I think it's going on my my favorite craft book list uh, right now. I'm gonna do a little list of my favorite craft books that I have that I just love right now but it, it's a great book it really speaks to me because it's it's all about kind of using uh, materials that you have and you know she even makes a jean quilt in the book and I have a I have my jean quilt that I'm still working on finishing and uh, so I just I just really love it oh and you got your papers for the English paper piecing awesome uh, I just got my my papers too so she does have some pre-cut papers uh, that you can buy for the English paper piecing, but I think I think it's also in the book too. If you, so, if you get the book, I think you can just trace the designs and make your own too. I believe. All right, so I'm weaving in back and forth three times there to secure it. See, so there now we're all secure right away. I don't have to do that away knot uh, to get going. Is there a link for the English paper piecing? Uh, it's it's free. It is. It's just a, it's a project from her book. All right, I'm gonna start back stitching again. We're gonna just back stitch up all these letters. Oh, and you got the story bill quilts book. Oh gosh, that one is just gorgeous too. That's another one that's on my favorite list. <laughs> oh, you're hitting all my favorite books, you guys. All right, I'm just going across this letter A and then I'll come back. Uh, the English paper piecing project project if you follow my newsletter I will uh, talk about it again soon but if you go to the wisecraft oh I'm not quite sure what the website is but if you go to the wisecraft blog Blair talks about the project there so it's free to do it is a project from her book though so um, it's to do it it's probably I mean, the, the book's worth it. It's really pretty. Uh, you can either get the book or there, I think she has links to the paper cutouts to make it. Oh, half inch hexes. Joza, those are teeny tiny, tiny. Oh, with your remnants from the splendid sampler blocks. How sweet. Yeah, it'll be fun. We're like on a, we're on a hand hand stitching bonanza lately here with the um with the I love home blocks with all that that we've been doing the needle turn applique and the embroidery and then this embroidery uh and then throwing some English paper piecing and we really uh we're really doing the whole doing up the whole hand hand slow stitching thing all right so here is where I'm gonna cross over I want the A to look like it's in front of this L so I am I'm gonna go over it oh the the author of the story quilt let me see it I have it written down uh, Yukari Takahara that is that is uh, her name but if you just on Amazon Go to story quilts i i think i have one of my videos here has a link to it as well i don't know if i have it in this one but an earlier video i do um but you can find it find it there as well 
I'm just trying to think of where to go next here. I think I'm going to go around, up and do this P and then work my way down. Oh, the needle, my embroidery needles. I don't, I mean, I only have them with my kits right now. However, I am putting together a supplies bundle. So I haven't talked about this yet, but I am, I'm in the works of putting together uh, some supplies for the website. So soon I will have needles there. Uh, they might first be available as this, this craft bundle that I'll be putting together, which will also have the new little scissors in. So again, keep, keep an eye out for your emails for that. I'm, I'm still working on that. So I don't have an email going out quite yet for that, but I will soon, but yeah, uh, then I'll have, I'll have hoops and uh, needles and scissors and, and all that available coming up soon here. But they are size five embroidery needles is what I use. And I use the DMC brand of them. And I don't know, they work awfully well to me. I mean, they're not too thin. I mean, they, they definitely have heft to them. All right, guys, I think I'm going to leap down here. I'm going to leap down and do this little French knot right there. So here's my plan. You know, I always like, I always like, um, mapping out my, where I want to go next. So I'm at this P right here. I'm going to leap down, do this, uh, French knot here, and then I'm going to leap back up, do this P and the Y, and then hopefully I have enough floss to do this flower and then maybe here and here, and then I can weave in the N into the L. So that's kind of my, my map. I don't know if I have enough thread for that. I actually pretty much, pretty sure I don't, but, but we'll see how far we can get. Okay. Nope, Patricia, we did the A and the P and I'm going to do this French knot now for the I. So I'm going to get real close here. So for a French knot, uh, you might be, there's like three different things you might be doing wrong if you have, if you're having trouble with a French knot. Uh, be sure to check out some of my YouTube videos about that. And I, I went over that in one of my earlier earlier videos here. But I'm going to come up. So he, here you can see my dot. I'm going to come up on one side of that dot. Okay. And then it, it's usually helpful to set it on a flat surface at this point. I'm going to actually zoom in if I can so you guys can see up close a little bit. Ooh, look, it's working. Okay. You get real close here, guys. Alrighty, so I'll try not to move around too fast. But now, look how look how giant my fingers are. Um, all right, so I'm gonna hold that thread kind of taut, and I'm gonna point my needle away from the hole. So I'm not going towards the hole. I'm going away. So that's that's the first thing you might be doing wrong. Is you might be going towards the hole. That's that's wrong. You want to go away, away from the hole. So I'm holding the thread right where it comes out of the hole there. So now with the needle pointed away, I'm going to wrap it around twice. Okay. So now at this point, I'm going to, I'm going to hold it with my fingers here just so that the loops don't fall apart. And I'm going to now point the needle to to the fabric. So before it was pointing away, now I'm pointing it towards, and I'm going to go on the other side. I'm going to just insert the needle on the other side of that dot. So uh, if you go in the same hole, you might pull the knot all the way through. So that's, that's the second thing you may be doing wrong. So not going in the same hole, like here's, here's my original hole. I'm going, oop, I'm going to the other side of that dot. I'm putting my needle in uh, just a little bit. So right now my needle's in there and now I'm going to pull those threads tight to the needle. Okay. So at this point I'm going to, I'm going to just zoom out again for you guys. So I do, I do all of that on, on the table because it's really nice to set it on a flat surface when you do that. And then I can pick it up again and I'm going to hold that knot that we just did with my thumb. 
So this is the third thing you might be doing wrong if you're having trouble with your French knots. You might just be pulling it through. If you pull it through though without holding down the knot, your loops will get bigger and flop all over the place and you might end up with big loopy knots instead of a nice uh, tight little French knot. So get your fingers on there, your thumb on there, hold that, we'll get close again, hold that knot in place and then you can pull, slowly pull your, uh, your floss through. So I'm still holding those loops and I'm slowly pulling the floss through until I can feel it that, it that it's done. And then I can lift up my finger. And then you have a perfect little French knot. <laughs> so there you go, guys. Uh, that was quickly the three things you might be doing wrong uh, with the French knot and, you know, how to do a French knot. And we will be doing a whole pile more of those all over the place. So uh, if you missed that, um, we'll be doing more. Otherwise, I do have some of those videos where I, where I go over the process a little bit. I think this time I'm going to go straight up and then this way because then I'm closer to this Y. I suppose it doesn't really matter. I'm going to do the same thing I did last time to make that P. Oop, dropping the needle. We're going to go around here. And when, I, when I'm looking at a curved edge like this, I'm kind of in my brain dividing it up into how can I construct this curve but use straight lines. Because really, every stitch we make is just one small straight line, right? So here, you know, you can see how I did it in this P here. I'm looking at it, okay, we got a straight one here. I can make a straight one up here. I want this edge to look, you know, flat. So I'm going to do another straight here, straight and straight. So you could, you could go from here and then straight up to a point here and then here and over. But then I think I would have too much of a point here and I like how it's flat feeling. So I am uh, uh, going to do it like this. One here, angled up, flat, angled up, and then flat. So I'm always kind of, uh, as I ap approach curves, kind of taking a look at what might be the best way to accomplish that curve. Oh, Gretchen, keep keep doing it. It'll get a uh, it'll get easier and just just think about those three things again, you know. First of all, does it did it turn out as a knot? If it turned out as a straight line or if you pulled it through or if it's getting really loopy, then, then you're probably missing one of these, these three things. Um, otherwise, after that, it just takes some practice, but you'll get, you'll get practice with, with this because we, we got them all over the place here yet. And, you know, post it in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group uh, that way we can take a look at it and uh, maybe diagnose, you know, if, if you're having issues, what's going on. You have an entire embroidery to do of English country cottage garden. Oh, how sweet. The whole thing is French knots. Oh my gosh. You need to, you'll have a lot to practice after that for sure. Your French knot is good. Oh, the curve and the letter E. Okay. Yeah. So same deal. Whenever you look at a curve, it's like, how can I construct that with straight lines. And sometimes I have to do it by making a lot smaller stitches. Like this is a teeny tiny curve here on this F. And I, I got the curve by just making my straight lines a lot, a lot shorter. And you know what? I'm perfectly fine with that. I don't think you need to have all your stitches the exact same length when you're stitching. I think we're going to do the, this Y in two big stitches. I have tried the co colonial knot. We did a little bit of that in the Splendid Sampler and uh, in uh, the, the how-to that I did a few weeks ago for embroidery to prep for, for this project. We did a few colonial knots there too. So colonial knots are, they look pretty similar to a French knot. I mean, if you're getting way in there, you know, you can tell a little differences, but to the normal eye, it's basically like a French knot but it's done a little differently. For example, your needle is pointed towards the fabric 
and then you do a little bit more of a loop-de loop with your with your uh, needle. But it has a pretty similar effect. So, all right, I'm kind of running out of floss here. I don't actually think I'm going to have enough floss for this entire flower, but we're going to we're going to give it a go. Okay, so one more stitch. Debating whether to start a new floss, but we'll keep going. So, you might notice I am doing little jumps to get to our next little areas and I am crossing over an area where you know you can you can see it through my fabric a little bit uh, and I'm going to continue doing that I you know I could tie this off and then start fresh so I don't have those jumps or I could have put a, an interfacing on the back so you can't see them but I actually don't uh, don't mind so much um, We'll be doing a, a few more jumps around here, so if if that matters to you, then you could uh, weave it in and then start fresh. But I think that's a whole lot of extra work, so we're going to just jump around for this quick little fun project. So for you, the colonial knots help the thread not pulling through. You mean like if you go into the same hole, it doesn't pull through? Uh, let me know. All right. So we have a lazy daisy stitch now. So a lazy daisy is that cute little flower. Here we go, that cute little flower. And then it has an extra little French knot in the middle there. But uh, this flower has, how many do we have in here? We have eight petals on ours. So a lazy daisy is basically a bunch of single chain stitches that radiate uh, from a center point. So, we're going to start at that center point and I'm going to I'm going to treat the center point in the same way that I treat the French knots. I'm going to go on the outer edge of that circle for for all of these. So like this one I'm starting on that upper upper edge and I'm going to do I'm going to do this loop right here. So that one's going to be at the upper edge. This one that I do down here will probably be at the lower edge of that dot. But I'm making a circle with my thread. So you can kind of see I'm, I'm making like this loop like this. And then I'm going to go in the same hole. You can go right next to the, the hole, but I'm going to go in the same hole right now. And before I pull my circle tight, I'm going to bring my needle back up on the opposite end of the petal. So just, just opposite um at from the center right so as far as it radiates out that's that's where i'm going to bring the needle back up see all right and then since that is inside this loop it's going to catch right so there we go the loop didn't have anywhere to go because i i caught it with that thread that i pulled out so that but that's not going to stay very well see it it flops up it moves all over um, that doesn't stay on its own. So we are going to make one teeny tiny stitch right on the other side of that loop. So here it is from the side, just right on the other side of that loop. There we go. And it's in a new hole. It's not going in the same, same hole, just right on the other side. And that just tacks it down. And then we're going to just do that for all of these other loops as well and go around the whole thing. So I think I can maybe get a couple more in here. So for I'm going to do this one next. I'm going to start at that area of that dot. So I'm not I'm not going in the same place as where the last one is. It would just get too bulky if all of these were coming in and out of the same hole. All right? I like holding it with my thumb to help me make that loop going back in the same hole. Then out at that other end of that petal through that circle so that we catch it when it comes through and then we'll tack it but one thing I want you guys to notice is that I am NOT pulling this tight if I um, if I pull this really tight see what happens so I'm pulling this really tight now compare it to this first one it almost looks like it's a straight 
line, right? Uh, we've lost that pretty loop. So you don't have to be, you don't have to pull every stitch super duper tight. I'm just pulling it right till it's this perfect sweet little loop, a lazy loop, uh, not a tight loop, um, a lazy loop. And then we'll just tack it down again by doing that little stitch on the other side of the loop. Oh, I am using, um, Patricia, I am using three strands of floss still. So three strands of floss. Uh, it's six strand in embroidery floss is what we started with and we split it into the three. All right, I'm gonna do one more and then it's time to weave in the ends. Okay, so I'm gonna start, you know, I'm still going around this kind of center circle. We're gonna go right here. And I'm getting a little crinkly too with my thread. Go in the same hole again. Here's another way you can do it. You can do it the sewing method way too, where you go in and out at the same time. So here's my loop. I'm making the loop around, around that petal that I wanna do. And then I'm gonna go in and out on the other side of the petal at the same time. They all get real close there. So then I can actually tuck my circle underneath the needle right away, like that, and then finish pulling, pulling through. So that's another way that you can do it. Again, I'm not pulling it super tight. Um, and then tack it down again. I personally like doing it the stabbing method still, just because I think you get a little more accuracy. Ooh, I'm gonna try and get one more out of here. Let's do it. Yeah, I don't have much thread left. If you if you don't get it right in that in your circle right away, like like now, you can just take the loop and put it around your needle. Pull it through gently, let it be lazy, and stitch on the other side. So, all right, guys, I do not have much floss left, so let's weave in the ends. Oh, and I hate weaving in the ends when I'm this close to my, to the hoop. Sometimes it's nice to stitch with a larger hoop, even if you are ending up with a small design. But, you know, in this way, for the kit, you can actually use the hoop as a kind of display when you're done. So it works, it works for, works for our needs. Oh, the, th the three strands makes, makes the lazy daisies more accurate? Oh, that's interesting, I haven't heard that before. All right, I'm just gonna kinda weave it in again here. Another little stitch. All right, I think, I think we're locked in place there. All right, let's trim our excess. You came in late, Miss, why are the yellow A and P over the blue? Oh! That's, uh, so it looks like the A and P are in front of it. So that's, that's how I did it here. You could do it the other way around. If you want the L to look like it's on top of the A and P, you can do that as well. You could, you could stitch the L on top of it. And you could have, like, I could have, um, even if I stitched the L first, I could have ducked underneath this thread uh, to stitch this one if I wanted this to go under the thread instead of over. But that's why, just part of the design. You can do it the other way, that's perfectly fine. Okay, where should we, like again, I'm trying to map it out again. So what I think we'll do, I think we should continue, we should finish up this circle. And then we got a few other yellow guys down here. So let's do the circle, pop down here, then pop over here for that uh, single chain stitch. And then that kind of leaves us at an awkward place to keep going. But what I think we'll do is we'll weave it behind these stitches here and then get our H going. We can do our H, hop back, do this French knot, and then start hopping up and uh, getting, getting over here. I think that'll work. Mapping it out is good. So, okay, I have my other three strands ready to go here. So this these are my three remaining strands. I did not pull these out individually. I, I kind of want to, I'm curious to see if it twists up a lot more. So um, in theory, if you pull all the strands out and put them back together, you won't 
have as much twisting. Let's give that a try. <laughs> I want to see what the variation of, of that would be. So this is still kind of twisted from the original, from the original um, six strands. All right, again, I'm going to weave it in. Let's, let's try weaving from up here. Maybe that'll be a little easier. Yeah, so we're, we're just doing a test. Normally, what I would like to do just to ensure that my, my threads won't twist up a lot, I would separate these three, these three like how we did the first three, even though it seems a little silly because you already have three strands. Um, why separate them again? But I think, you know, to help with that twisting, it's worth it. So let's just see if this really does get super twisted up. I did not, I, I'm, you know, we're running an experiment right now. <laughs> I always like doing that, experimenting and crafting. They go well together. So just going to shape this loop a little bit. There we go. Oh, this guy got a little tighter too. Um... It's probably not a great idea to be weaving into the backs of these stitches because it's pulling on the fronts of the stitches, which is making them tighter. So um, it just was a poor place to end right here. I should have maybe stopped at that Y and then just just dealt with the fact that I'd be wasting a little floss, but oh uh, well, we are okay. So I'm gonna continue going around here and then we'll get some of these French knots and it's hard to see, but there is a little, um, little chain, single chain stitch there. And then again, this lazy daisy is just a bunch of single chain stitches. So that other chain stitch will be no different. It'll just be all alone. Your, oh yeah, so your thread will also lay flatter as well because the strands won't be twisted up on each other. Um, you'll have that, it'll perceptually, it'll, it'll look like it's, laying a little flatter. But either way, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, I'm getting that guy in the loop. But yeah, if you, like here already, when I um, let my thread go, it, it twisted up on itself. So uh, there is something to it, the pulling the, all the threads apart. So the other thing I'm kind of hoping is that we get one of those loopy knots. And that can happen a lot when your thread is twisting up quite a bit. But I have a little trick to get rid of those loopy knots. So uh, if we get one of those, I'll, I'll share it with you guys. We might try and on purpose make one. You like the flowers? Fluffy. So I mean... It, there's a lot of petals in this, this lazy daisy. I mean, you don't have to do, this is eight petals. You definitely don't have to do that many anytime you're doing a lazy daisy. You can actually vary the lengths of the petals too. And that's kind of fun. Um, that's a fun thing to do. Actually, I actually have a design coming out that will have some fun petals like that, that we'll, um, I'll have to share soon. I have some new work coming out soon, guys. I can't wait. Um, but yeah, you can be really free form with, with your flowers. But I think because I have so many flowers here or petals here, it does look a little fluffy. All right, I'm gonna just leap down to here. If you don't wanna make as big of a leap, you could leap to like this, this E and then leap down uh, and what that would look like. Like, you know, okay, so here I can kind of see that circle underneath. If, if I don't want a toe catcher is what we called it in the Splendid Sampler, if, we, if I don't want a jump that's that big. I will just catch some of the, the backs of other stitches that are closer, like that. So now my, my leap's only that big and then I'll have another leap about that, that big. I have a couple uh, Christmas embroideries. I have that little dog and kitty ornament, but that is, that is it for Christmas. I should really do some more of those. All right, I'm gonna do another French knot and I'll get in close again for you guys. So let's try and zoom in again here. Maybe I won't get so close. We'll get, we'll get there this time. So, all right, pulling the thread away from the fabric and pointing the needle. 
use the point of the needle, I'm pointing it away. So if, if you're looking from the side, I'm pointing, pointing it up away from the hoop. All right, wrapping it around twice. Here, sorry guys, let me get centered again. Wrapping it around twice and putting my fingers up top there to hold them in place. And then I am pointing back towards the dot and I'm gonna put the needle in on the other side of that dot. I don't wanna go in the same hole. You don't have to go that far away, but like at least two threads away from that original so you can actually see space there. So my needle's in there a little bit and uh, then I'm gonna release my finger there and pull those loops tight. All right, now I can lift it up again. I'll do it down here yet though. So I'll get my thumb, hold my thumb on those loops so they don't fly all over the place. And I'm gonna pull my needle and the thread the rest of the way through. There we go. And there is our next little French knot. So, all right, I'm gonna now leap through the backs of these stitches. Why don't we stay this close for a little while? Um, I'm gonna leap to the backs of these stitches so I'm not making one giant leap. And now you can barely see it. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see it at all, but right here is a little chain stitch. So I'm gonna go up here, make the loop go back in the same hole, come out on the other side of that pedal, which I know it's really kind of, oops, there we go. Sorry guys, hard for you to see, I'm moving around. And then we're catching that loop, making it lazy. There we go. And then just stitching on the other side, one little stitch on the other side of that loop to hold it in place. There we go. And that's our little single chain stitch. So that's what, that's what our Lazy Daisy is made out of. It's made out of eight single chain stitches around a point. This is just the building block of that, just one single chain. So, all right, I'm gonna zoom out again, guys, if I can. There we go. All right, back to, let's jump back up and we got this H to do yet and I have enough thread for that. So. I'm going to, again, stitch in the back of these stitches because that's kind of a large, a large leap. I'm gonna catch that back of that L and some of that A. There we go. And, ooh, I got a little caught here. Oh, I, I this might happen to you sometimes. When I pulled the needle up, I went through my thread. Ooh, let's see if I can, like I pierced, the tail end of my thread when I came up. I'm gonna just try and push it out. Yeah, see right there, see I, I snagged it. I'm gonna try and get my needle out of there. There we go. <laughs> Back in business. All right, let's stitch this H. We have one little X here yet that's kind of uh, light, but uh, that is, that's in blue. So not, not the orange. So we're cruising along tonight. We're gonna get a whole other word done plus, plus a bunch of details. Do I ever use a thimble for embroidery? Phyllis, I don't, um, mostly because, well, first of all, a couple of reasons. One, I'm really awkward with a thimble. I tried to get better at it during the Splendid Sampler with some of the the, uh, the needle turn applique and stuff. And I did get better, but I was using like a vintage needle and I just don't, or a vintage thimble and I just don't think they fit my fingers very well. Uh, but, I don't feel like I need it for a project like this just because it's so easy to put my, to get the needle through that I don't feel like I need that extra push of a thimble. I mean, if I was doing like a hundred of these for some crazy reason and I was doing, like I, if I was pushing 
in the same spot each time. I might put like one of those little rubber thimbles on, but really for a project like this, I just don't think it's needed. All right, you know what? I'm gonna jump over to this French knot and we will do that one lone little French knot that's hanging out here. And I'll do it from, so you guys can see it, uh, like what it looks like for me, not, not zoomed in. So I'm holding the needle away or the, the, the thread away and I'm pointing the needle away from the fabric round twice, holding the threads, the loops, pointing it back at that hole, but a couple, I'm a couple strands away, let go, pull the needle tight to the fabric and then I can hold it there with my thumb, holding those loops with my thumb. And I just pull slowly and there we go. And now I'm gonna jump back and do the rest of this H. Gotta sneak in those extra, extra details that are hanging out there. Oh, I'm like, why is it fuzzy? I think this, I got a little fuzzy area to my H here. And I think that's where I accidentally stabbed it with the needle earlier. <laughs> I don't think that'll be very noticeable to anyone. All right, done with the happy. So let's map out the next area. I don't have that much thread left, but I do have a little bit. I don't wanna stop yet. So I'm gonna hop up to this French knot right there. And then I think I'll just start this letter C and I don't think I'll get all that far. So I'll get enough stitches so it'll be easy to weave in the uh, back of those stitches and uh, then I'll be done with this, this piece of floss. There's my French knot again. That was more real time doing a French knot. And let's start stitching this C. So again, this is a curve. So I am, uh, I am, trying to figure out what is the best way to divide this into a bunch of straight pieces to make this curve. So I'm always seeing my next stitch as a straight line. So about right there, another straight line, straight line, and then trying to get it so it balances out at the end, like the stitches are the same. So I'm always, I'm always having that running through my head. How can I split this curve up into straight stitches? and still keep the general stitch length that I'm, that I'm using. And you know, some you do a little bit better than others or you make better decisions on, on some versus others. Like here, I think I can get three more. I can get one there, there, and there. Three straight lines. And I think I may have just enough floss to do that. Yep, just, just barely enough floss, I think. Yeah, okay, we are gonna weave in this to the back, back of the stitches. Oh! <laughs> I totally agree, Gretchen. It is super duper relaxing. What I like about embroidery, like to me, it's not like full Zen mode, like a simple knit project, like knitting a washcloth. To me, that's like full Zen where you don't have to think at all. This is that good mix of completely relaxing, but you still have to make creative decisions. Like you still have to map out where your next move is going to be or decide what area you want to stitch first or second. So there is, it's like, it's like a step above Zen stitching, I think, uh, where you still have to make decisions. All right, like right now, we are gonna decide what to do next. So I could keep going with the yellow gold color and just finish up this, this word and get a couple of these other dots in there. We got a dot here to do, a dot in the middle there and here. And then we're done with the gold, right? Or the yellow. So, 
in theory, you know, my brain wants to finish that off just to have it done. However, I have this lazy daisy uh, hanging out here. And I would love to have this blue stitched in before I stitch that orange French knot because that's gonna be a bear to try and get into, like you know how I, I got way close into all, all these stitches. Imagine trying to get, find all those spots with a big old knot there and in your way, right? So it's gonna be way easier if I can get this blue guy stitched before I um, put that French knot, that gold French knot in the middle of it. So I'm gonna actually switch colors. And it looks like I have, I have some blue left over from last night. Let's do the twist test again. So this, well, let's not. Okay, so this is, um, this is some blue that I have left over from last night. You know, we split, I used uh, just one, one strand or one um, three strand bit for, for the life. So this was left over. Let's do the thing where even though it's three strands, let's separate it again. So here we go, one at a time, I'm just gonna pull all of them out, let that relax again. Two, and I'm, all, I'm always placing them in the same place so that my starting points, my three, these three ends end up being these three ends. I'm not like rotating it around. Like I'm not making so like that this bottom end is all of a sudden matched with those. All, all the pieces by that started at my finger are gonna stay, those are the same ends here. So put them together again. So in theory, this should twist less and, and lay flatter. All right, ready to go again. So, all right, we've, we decided to do blue so I can get this in, but we didn't come up with a plan really. Um, let's see, well, we finished all the blue over here, but we do have a few more pops of blue. So what would be good maybe is to hit this uh, cross down here, this little X, kind of weave up behind the H, jump over, do this little kind of leafy bit, and uh, then get around to these, this French knot, this uh, X, and then then get to those lazy daisies. I think going around like that, I think might be the, the path. That, that way we don't have like one little X hanging out here um, that you didn't know what to do. Any other ideas to display finished pieces instead of the wooden hoop? Uh, well, you can, you could, if you want it still as an art piece, you could, you can put it in a normal frame as well. If you don't have enough fabric for that, you can sew extra fabric on. I think, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm with that jeans from yesterday that we used the sticky Fabri-Selvi on. I'm gonna put that into a sewing project, I think. So I'm gonna actually sew that into uh, this bag project that I want to do. Um, I'm going to weave into the ends here. So you can actually use it for something afterwards. You could uh, sew some felt onto the back of it and then it could be like a little patch even. So there's there's all sorts you could do. Oh, like a little pillow, Janet, that's a great idea. Oh yes, Bonnie, frame it or, or make a small quilt out of it. Yeah, this could be this could just be one little square of a whole quilt that, and then, you know, that'd be kind of a fun idea that like a patchwork quilt and then someone would have to find this block within all that patchwork. That'd be kind of cute. So yeah, you don't have to, it doesn't have to end up in, in the hoop like this, especially if you want to keep the hoop and use the hoop again, <laughs> then for sure feel free to um, you know, use this fabric. There's enough edge on it. Like there's a, it's a square. So there's enough edge uh, to do stuff with it. You could put it, uh, you could put glass over it. I don't always like doing that with embroidery because there's something nice about seeing the stitches. But you'd see the stitches with glass over it too. I don't think it'd be that big of a problem. A shadow box that that might be kind of neat. Yep, the X is just an X. Um, I didn't put instructions on how to do that just because it's two. Ba it's basically just two straight stitches. You're making it's like a back stitch almost. You're you're making a one stitch and then you're going over and making your other stitch. It is just an X. 
All right, so it's a little light here, but I'm gonna go up to that little leafy part here. It was a little, there we go. It was a little light on when I transferred it. So to do that, I'm gonna weave through this H again to jump up there. Oh yeah, it, it could be an ornament. That would be really cute. This would be really sweet as an ornament. All right, I'm gonna do the chain stitches now. So again, three, Sorry, I keep moving, guys. This is very similar to uh, a Lazy Daisy stitch, but it's like I'm only doing half of the flower, right? I'm doing just three, three, and then um, two stitches. That's a good point, Bonnie. The glass, if you wanted to frame this in glass, it would definitely keep it cleaner, that's for sure. Oh, anti-glare glass. Oh, that's a good tip. Use anti-glare glass. That's interesting. Oh, I like that idea. But yeah, if you if you don't have it behind glass, it, it will get dusty. So, um, you know, keep that in mind. But yeah, this one I, I will leave in the frame and I'll show you how to how I like leaving them in the frame, how, how I glue them down and stuff. Um, maybe we'll even wrap the hoop if we have um, extra time just to make it extra cute but uh, I'll show you how to do that when we're done here but the other one like I said I'm, I'm stitching another one of these on that jeans with the Fabri-Selvi I actually finished it today but I'll, I'll show you guys tomorrow um, oop, almost got a knot there but that I will be sewing into a whole project Ooh, a pin cushion, that's a good idea. Yeah, any little small project or or even like a big project, like a quilt, this would be a fun little, little add-on piece to it. All right, I'm stitching that little stem. And it's curved, so I'm trying to do it in two stitches so I can get that curve. All right, and then I got a French knot there, an X there, uh, and then the petals. This one's a, This one's gold, so I skip over that. So uh, instead of making this leap again, I'm going to weave it into the back of that letter C just so that the jump isn't that large. There we go. All right, here's that French knot here. I'm going to set it down again. Twisting it, holding it, putting the needle back in, pulling those loops tight and holding it there. Oh, fused postcards. Oh, Peggy, that is a sweet, sweet idea. Oh man, that's neat. I like that idea a lot. All right, another X. So that's just, we make one cross of the X and the other cross of the X. All right, I have nothing to weave it in, so I'm just gonna make this leap over here. It's kind of a bigger leap than I usually would like to make, but we're gonna do it anyway. And same deal as before, we are going to do our lazy daisies kind of around the edges of that center circle there. We're actually making single chain stitches and, and all those together make what we call a lazy daisy. Again, I'm not pulling it too tight, I'm just leaving it a nice sweet loop. I like holding it with my thumb, that, that thread. I've never made a fabric postcard before. Are you gonna, are you gonna like sew it onto cardstock or something to make postcards? I just think that sounds neat, like a little patchworky. They'd make like great holiday cards too, even maybe um, sewing, you could, you could, uh, do pinking, you could take a pinking scissors that has that little zigzag and then um, stitch it onto to paper. That would be kind of neat. You could Mod Podge it to something if you want to get real crazy. <laughs> I think with Mod Podge, you'd, you'd probably see the texture of the stitches yet. That'd be kind of silly. But like on a sketchbook cover or something, that'd be cool. Um, or a notebook co cover, Mod Podge, directly onto the cover. Okay, that might be getting crazy. 
But you could mod podge it to like a little wooden box or something. I don't know. We're getting weird now. But those are sometimes the most fun projects. A person hand stamp it? The postcard has to be a... Oh, I think I, I missed some of that. Oh yeah, like on a, on a craft journal. It'd be a fun little thing. Especially, you know, I, I like keeping all my sketchbooks afterwards. I date all my sketchbooks and all my craft stuff. So for me, it's not like a big loss if I put something like this on a cover and then I finish up the sketchbook and then it's like, oh, but then I don't have that thing anymore. I, I keep all those sketchbooks that I, and I look, I look through them for ideas and stuff sometimes. So then I'll know, oh yeah, that's when we did the, that craft a happy life embroidery pattern. That was fun. <laughs> it's fun little history then if it's on on one of those sketchbooks. All right, two more and and I don't know. I think I might I think we might end this floss after this because it would be nice to have the rest of this word craft um, to weave ends in. Uh, and I don't think I don't think this blue is going to get me that that much farther. So I think this will be our last stitch with the blue. And I think it's going to be our last stitch for the evening. But we got so far tonight. I actually think, let's see, tomorrow's Thursday. I think we will finish the stitching tomorrow. I'm, a, I'm actually pretty sure about that. We, we stitched a whole ton. All we didn't do is the life we had that yesterday. So that's about the same amount as what we did today. I think we will have no problem. And we got two of the lazy daisies done. That takes some time. Uh, let's weave in the ends here. But yeah, I think we will get this embroidery done tomorrow on Thursday. And then on Friday, uh, I will take off the sticky Fabricelvi from the other design so you guys can see how that works. I'm going to go through one more time and we will finish this guy off in the hoop. So for that on Friday to finish this off in the hoop I am going to use a hot glue gun so uh, if you have one of those that works great for framing it up in the hoop uh, when we're done. So um, if you want to do that on Friday uh, then make sure to have that available as well. So, all right, there we are. We got a whole lot done. We still, we don't have the little dots in our flowers yet, so we'll add that tomorrow. Uh, this is all orange. That is, oh, for orange, we just have this dot, the raft, <laughs> and then these two dots up here, this French knot and the French knot that's in there. And then the rest is blue. So the letter A is blue and all these little this little cluster of French knots, and um, there is blue. <laughs> Looks like the original. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. So uh, I'm going to take it out of the hoop again for the evening. Actually, I might leave it in the hoop for now um, so I can take a photo of it, but I will take it out for the evening when we're done. But I will flip it around, flip the camera around, and um, show you how far we got, uh, what it looks like next to a person. So, all right. Hey there, I'm back. So here we are so far. Nice little hoop, little four inch hoop. But yeah, we are cruising along. So this was a leisurely, this is like a leisurely two and a half hour project. We took a long time yesterday to uh, to transfer the design and we still got that whole, the whole life, the life stitched. Everything else we did this evening. So one more evening of that and done. Perfect palette cleansing project. Uh, nice, just quick, fun stitching. This would be a perfect road trip project. You'd get it done immediately. Unless you get car sick like me, then you would not get any of it done. <laughs> or, you know, watching a movie and you'll be good to go. So awesome, guys. Thanks so much for coming in again. This will go up on Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube. So you can watch the replay there. That works really well, especially if you don't get Facebook very well. Um, it, it shows up clean and clear there as well. 
and it will also stay here on the Facebook Penguin and Fish page. So thanks again. I will catch you guys tomorrow. Have a great evening. Good night.